So let's consider setting up a palette. A ceramic palette is my choice. Uh, when I'm working, I like to I like the feel of ceramic first. I like the texture, but I also find the paint does exceptionally well in the ceramic as opposed to a plastic palette. You can definitely get this for half price. This comes in plastic and a third of the price, and it's great, but I personally don't like the way it pools. I keep these type of older, like I buy these at the secondhand store, and I keep these ceramic plates around or ceramic wells around for me just to, if I want to just concentrate on a color and um, I use this ceramic plate in class, everyone gets one of these plates. And this is our, our student communal well, if you will, three people generally share this well. And they start out like this, everyone has this, they dip into the, to this common well and we do our work from there. But I also have this personally, I have one of these on my, in my own personal office, studio, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I also work with these a lot. I do pans. These are two, this is for tubes. This is for pans. Uh, these types of pans come fixed, but they also can come empty. They can also come, you can also buy extra of these little things. I'm trying to get one out. Of course, they're not moving. Um, so let's see, this comes out and I want to show it to you. It's a little half pan. This is a half pan. So double the size is a full pan. When this becomes empty, you can fill it with a tube. So that works quite well. You can also buy this thing empty. You can buy this whole thing with no, no paints in it whatsoever. I like the metal because it works well. I don't love plastic, but I do have a plastic palette for when I travel. This is my travel one and I love her. She's Hirataki. It comes with a space for my marker, my traveling brush, if you will. This is perfect. This is filled with water, a pencil, my kneadable eraser, which is key to watercolor. It doesn't leave any debris and it also uh, is easy on the paper. So this comes filled all nice and done. I have my wells for mixing. I travel with this. It fits, it fits right into my bag, my travel bag, and I'm good to go. They now have, when I started, this was just starting to become a thing. And these water brushes are fun to have. Now they have them all kinds of different ends. So it's, it's great. And you don't have to look for the water. It's in the pen itself. So <clears throat> that's my travel pan. So pans are great, lovely, use them. But for today, we're just gonna try and set up a palette with the tubes and your, your paints are semi-permanent. So like permanently placed. So you've got to decide where they go. And when these colors come out, chances are pretty good when they're dry, you're not gonna know what colors they actually are because it becomes hard to see. So you need to, in my mind, keep the reds together, the oranges together, the greens and browns and the blues. I keep on either end a black and a white. I, we don't use a lot of black and white in class, but it's there. Payne's gray is the love of everyone's life these days. So I do two sections of Payne's gray just for convenience sake, but if I was, if this was my personal palette, I would not. So I'm going to set this up and squeeze each tube into here and that's how that's gonna work.